Hey y'all, what I got today is the Nikon 35 to 105 f 3.5 to 4.5 variable lens. Mine came with a lens hood and a filter. Mine's got the L1BC light filter on it. I'm thinking that's a blue filter for back in the film days. It's currently stuck. I can't get it to break loose, so it's on there pretty good. I'll probably break it loose at some point with a, uh, by freezing it or something. I'm gonna try not to damage the filter since it's a legit Nikon filter. I really don't want to damage it. This little lens is a gem. Now it's got some issues with like flaring and that's one of the reasons I want to pull the filter off. It's got dust between it and the front element of the lens. Hey, look at that. I be that gum. <laughs> it just broke loose all at once. And I'm telling you, I've been fighting this thing. Look at that. <laughs> I've been putting some pressure on it. But it did, it came right off. Huh. Well now, well that's good. Anyway, now that that's out of the way. But this came from the heyday of Nikon's all metal construction, manual focus lenses. This little lens has a has a nice little aperture ring, nice pronounced aperture clicks. I mean, you can probably hear them. Now it's it's gauged, okay, for 35 millimeter because at the at the widest focal length you get your largest aperture, I believe. Then at 105, as you zoom it out that aperture constricts off to 4.5. So you lose about a stop a lot in, in racking the zoom out. This lens ha has a ton of information on it. What these are, are your depth of field markings that goes along with this. Say from 35 millimeter, you get at F22, you get basically everything on earth in focus all the way out to 70, where it, it, as it zooms out, you can see it narrows steeply. This little button right here and this M if you push this button and spin this M till it lines up with the aperture reference mark, you'll notice that it racks out the lens ever so slightly. If I run it in, you can see it shorten it and then it lengthens it. And by doing that, what they're doing is they're moving the focus helicoid further away just a little bit more, giving you macro functionality. And it'll focus to about 140 millimeters, 14 centimeters is what the book says. I did get the lens hood, but I didn't get an owner's manual. But this lens has a really nice large grip area for focusing. The focus mech is nice and smooth. You can push it with one finger. It's a little stiff on my copy. Under normal use, this would work just fine. There's no issues there. It's got the typical Nikon mounts. It's got the automatic aperture control for cameras with metering. You push it all the way out for 105 millimeters and that's 70 and 50 and 35 and they're color coded. And then it shows on here as well, it's, it's the two colored dots on the aperture lock ring. The green is for 35 mil and then the orange is 105 millimeter and they're right there. The lens has beautiful glass. It does have a little bit of issues with flaring and like direct sun. You might want to run the lens hood or not try to get the sun in the frame where it's shining on the front element because it's got some it's got some flaring problems. It's a nice little sharp lens and the focus is nice and crisp works really well and i mean and it's a, a short throw focus i mean you're only moving about 60 degrees maybe that's about honestly it's about a 90 degree focus throw so it's moving about 90 degrees on the, from from minimum to maximum focus that ain't bad at all and then of course if you hit the macro ring it brings it on out a little more it's a quarter turn on the macro ring. This lens is all aluminum construction. There's no plastic in this lens that I can find, except maybe the aperture ring itself. It, but the rest of it, the barrel, the focus helicoil, all of that is all metal. One, two, three, four, five. It has a seven bladed aperture. It give, should give you some really interesting sun stars if you can get rid of the ghosts. <laughs> You know, if you stopped it down and shot night photos and the street lights, it give you some nice interesting little stars. But yeah, it's a beautiful piece of glass. Well, well made. The lens hood itself has two little rubber grippers there, one on the side with the lock screw. Then the lock screw, I've bent my screw, I see. But the lock screw just puts pressure on this pad, so you just literally slide it down over the lens and just snug down the screw and it tightens it down on the lens and it won't slip. It's real simple. You put it on upside down, no. You can if you want to, but I wouldn't recommend it. I just leave it right side up. Then of course mine came with the 
ancient Nikon lens cap that's like almost impossible to install and remove with the lens with the lens hood on. Yeah, that's an HK11 Nikon lens hood. Isn't that neat? How about we get the XT3 out, see what it looks like with it on the camera. And there it is, mounted to the camera. I ain't believing that filter came off. It's it's going to win. This is actually a good little lens. For especially for like general photography and street shooting and things like that. But for someone wanting vintage glass, got that retro kind of feel too. It it seems to be a performer. Well, I would say if you like to shoot vintage lenses and you don't mind dealing with manual focus and a lens that might have an issue or two here and there, like with some ghosts or flaring, you know, you're willing to accept that for the paltry price of about 40 bucks, then I'd say grab one of these. eBay is covered up in them right now and they're just giving them away. It's a great little lens. Yeah, it's got its issues. But for the most part, it's a beautiful little piece of glass. Great little lens for $40. So yeah, I would recommend you grab one if you like to shoot vintage lenses adapted to your cameras like I do. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. And it'll fit your Nikon cameras natively anyway. So, you know, if you want to put it on them and take some pictures, it'll work. It's an AIS lens. It'll, it'll give you full metering and all that jazz. With that, this is David, the Georgia photographer. And I appreciate you guys watching. And if you could... Find it in your heart to hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. If you like the channel and you want to see more and all that jazz, you know where the subscribe button is down there and the notification bell. And now notifications does new stuff. So you ought to click on it just to see what all they let you pick and do now because it gives you choices. But <laughs> anyway, until next time, y'all get your camera out and go take some pictures. All right, we'll see y'all. Bye-bye.